Hi, this is Pat Moorhead with more insights and strategy. And as you can probably tell, this is a very special 6-5 uh, podcast here. Daniel, where are you broadcasting from? I'm broadcasting from North Austin. But, you know, sometimes the big moments pop up and we just have to do this where we do this. You're in your, I think you're in your living room. Um, <laughs> I'm in my backseat of my car. I get enough room propped up on some, some boxes to make it look like I'm in a good setup. But, you know, we do look good. And that's the beauty of a high-tech connected world with fast speeds. You know, that's what we need. Those data centers that are switching fast, Pat. And by the way, I think we're doing this because there's some pretty big news that, uh, you know, is breaking and we want to be part of sharing it. Let's bring in our special guests right now from Marvell. And Marvell, how are you, gentlemen? Now, let's do this. How about if we have you introduce yourself? Chris, maybe you go first. Sure. Yeah, great to be on with you again, uh, Pat and Dan. Good to see you. Um, so, so yeah, my name is uh, Chris Koopmans, and I'm the Chief Operations Officer at Marvell, and I, I cover, I run marketing and operations at Marvell. Hi guys, great to be here. My name is Nariman Yousefi. I'm the Executive Vice President responsible for the switching, coherent DSP and automotive division at Marvell. So who wants to be the first to break the big news here? <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> I'll do it. So, so, so yeah, so this morning we announced that Marvell is acquiring Inovium. Um, Inovium is a, a, a um, venture-backed company in the switching business. Um, and, Marvell, of course, is already in the switching business, but we're fo focused primarily on the feature-rich segment, and um, Inovium has really uh, been very successful at gaining share in the um, in the in the cloud or the hyperscale data center market. Um, and so we're really excited about this acquisition. It complements what Marvell is doing perfectly, and really broadens and rounds out our portfolio um, of offerings for our, our hyperscale data center customers. Yeah, this is a big move for the company. Just uh... You know, it seems like several months now, and I can't remember the day, but I remember I wasn't home for this one either. Uh, you know, the Infi news broke. You guys, uh, you know, we're getting into, you know, bigger and bigger spaces, $10 billion deals. This one's closer to a billion, but still a really big deal. Takes you guys into a, a space in the market that, you know, everyone was asking about after the Infi deal, after you really expanded the optics play. You know, Nirman, why is this such a big deal? I mean, the name's not a household name. But for what you're doing, at least Pat and I both said, as soon as we heard it, like, this is this is big news. Yeah, I mean, that, that, I mean to your point, uh, there's a lot of emphasis that company has done towards supplying what the customers in cloud need. And, and frankly, that is a segment of the market that's growing the fastest. So in terms of the addressability of the market, in terms of what the cloud uh, players need, they need very fast connectivity, high-speed switching, and the big deal is that even though at Infi products that where we come, where I come from, we focus a lot on the optical and the physical layer, you're suddenly switching technology to connect everything together. Yeah. And now with the combination of both assets together, we can provide very competitive solutions. We can innovate and we can innovate in terms of what the customers need, not just today, but also in the, in the future. And the combination of the two will enable us to provide solutions that are scalable lower power and also meet the uh, requirements because a lot of these players also want multiple sources right now uh, there's one particular uh, company broadcom has a pretty um, a strong foothold in the market and frankly our customers want to have choices they want to have bigger stronger players that can that can execute and innovate and invest into what they need so that's a very big deal for us yeah i mean listen um I've been in semiconductors for a long time. I've been covering even longer. And anytime you have a market that has less than three players, it's a huge issue. And right now it's really, a, I guess, two, maybe a three horse, maybe a three horse race, probably a two horse race between Inovium and, and Broadcom. And customers don't like that. They, they, they really don't. Yeah, I think to that point, I mean, also, uh, also in, I mean, getting these new chips out is expensive and a scale matters. So our, our combination of the deep infrastructure of Marvell, the know-how and the investment capacity, plus the innovative uh, features, uh, what Innovium brings, 
in terms of having an optimized solution for data center is a great combination. We put them together, now we can really invest and make those combination of the assets better. This company comes, Innovium comes from a very rich uh, set of IPs, great team, and we really like what they've done and how they've been able to, as a startup company, even be able to penetrate some key accounts and have some very sizable revenue. And we really like what they have offered. Yeah, can, uh, can one of you talk about specifically what type of devices in these hyperscalers do these chips go into, very specifically? Yeah, this uh, uh, goes into this uh, switching platforms that are either packaged into one or U boxes or in chassis. And they're typically used in top of the rack where they connect different servers together and also cover, cover the, the kind of the infrastructure on the back end of the of the data center as the packets get aggregated up to the next layer. There's the top of the rack and then there's a spine and there's leaf and there's DCI level switches and all the connections within them, within all those switches are with optical elements. And uh, so Innovium brings the switching, a lot of the assets that we have, that we have at Infi brings the physical layer. So the combination is very strong. Okay, so just to be clear, this could be in the the Tor top rack switch, the spine switch, and the core router switch. Yeah, in the core router, probably not as much in terms of this technology, because it's more of a highly scalable flat networks that typically use these products, but that's where the volume is. And uh, so that gets complemented with another Marvel technology called Falcon class of products that could also be complemented uh, when, they, when there's being used in the core, in the core round router switches. You know, it's funny, uh, now, now that I think about this, uh, when you did the NFI, I should have seen this one coming, but I didn't. And like I tell uh, Daniel, hey, I don't get it right every time. Uh, sometimes I, I let this one skate by, but I should have seen this one coming. Yeah, it's definitely, yeah, so, it's definitely a good um, um, expansion of what we're doing today. Um, and I think it makes a lot of sense, particularly with NFI. And Marvell now has the broadest portfolio of silicon solutions for hyperscale data centers to really help them design their next generation architecture. So if you think yep. about when they're trying to build these networks out, it's more than just one piece. They all have to work together. And so it's hard when you have to buy point things from here and from there and from the other, and then they have to architect the whole thing. If they have a partner who can help them put it all together, it's, it's very helpful. Yeah, so I was going to kind of wrap this up because, you know, I know we got your time. I'm sure you got lots of media, press, interviews. Everybody's going to want to know what this move means. And so we were lucky to get early access and we're excited with the opportunity to share it with our community. But, uh, you know, you guys have made a lot of big moves. I kind of started this conversation around that. Uh, the market was sort of clamoring for you to get into switch into this space. You've made this move. You've now expanded your TAM greatly. You know, you're going to go to bat and compete with uh, Tomahawk and, and Broadcom that has a large market share and, a, and it's an opportunity. But, you know, this overall, what is this sort of saying about Marvell? What, how is this going to propel the company? Do you think simplifying the buying process is going to be the win? Do you think it's because people like working with Marvell? I mean, what in the end does this deal really mean? How is this going to propel the company forward? How quickly do you think markets are going to start to see this acquisition make an impact? whether that's in the quarterly numbers or just in the new customer wins. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Why, don't, why don't you go ahead, Nerman? So I think in general, um, I think it's twofold. One is the cloud markets right now, the volumes are large and what's at the stake in terms of making sure that there is continuity of supply and be able to support the growth for the cloud, the infrastructure is very as a paramount. So, Having companies like Marvel with the scale that can have the customers back and be able to supply the technologies from a procurement perspective is huge these days, especially with the chip shortages and all of that. But also, even more importantly, it's about how you solve problems innovatively, efficiently. And to do that, you need to have intellectual property. You have to have teams that can do it. You have to have a scale and investment capacity to do it. And that's where the data center operators look for us to not only supply them what they currently have, but also supply to them what's there to become. And I think you're going to see us 
be very aggressive in investments. We've got a lot of great ideas right now that we're that we're cooking right now, and together I think we can give some really innovative solutions to the, to the customers. Yeah, Nerman uh, and Chris, thank you both. I mean, look, this is great news. Um, uh, you know, some days I wake up and I say, "How would I spend a billion dollars today?" And you guys figured it out for me today. So, no, but this, this is uh, this is really the types of parts and pieces that are going to, you know, continue to make the company more and more complete, you know, whether it's been the DPU and the Octeon products and continuing to differentiate and get out ahead and, 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 you know, the move to N5, the move here into switching, you know, we had Matt Murphy at our six, five summit and had a chance to talk to him and others on your team continue to be impressed with the story and how it evolves. And I really hope that the market, I hope all you out there are paying attention because Marvel is clearly a company that sees it, where it's going in the future and is making some really significant moves to get there. So thank you both so much for taking some time here to join us on the 65 interview series. Thanks, Thanks again. Time.